you have your song book still, if you'll open back to some of the... <clears throat> Some of the songs that we've sang, um, I hadn't even spoken to Brother David um, today. And um, if you go back and look, <clears throat> the first song that he chose was uh, number 39. <clears throat> and I'm just going to point out a few um, of the verses in, in each of the songs that we sang. Um, we praise Thee, O God, our Redeemer. Um, we worship Thee, O God of our fathers. We bless Thee through life, storm, and tempest, our guide. Hast thou been? Um, then the second song that we sang was number 266, number 266, which that song was, uh, We Have Come Into His House. Um, in the second verse, and, one, and you'll see this at, through some of the scriptures that we'll be reading this morning, but the second verse says, Let's forget about ourselves and magnify His name and worship Him. Amen. <clears throat> Let's forget about ourselves. They magnify His name and worship Him. Um, then the third song, or the, one of the other songs, was number 520. <clears throat> number 520, which was Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. And you can read through that, and hopefully after the, after, uh, the teaching this morning, you'll, you'll be able to see some of the words in that song. And then number 378, <clears throat> we're, uh, we're pressing on the Upward Way, number 378, um, Higher Ground. And each, each, of, each one of those verses, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Um, my heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Um, I want to live above the world. And hopefully after, after the lesson this morning, you'll be able to see how beautiful those songs are. And then the, the last song that we just sang just then, um, trust and obey. If you have your Bibles, if you'll turn to Genesis, um, Genesis chapter five. <clears throat> Genesis chapter five. Um, I want to read from um, verses twenty-one through twenty-four. <clears throat> Genesis chapter five, verses twenty-one through twenty-four. <clears throat> and Enoch lived. Sixty and five years, and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God. After he begat Methuselah three hundred years, and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. Verse 24 says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Correctly read, that's Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. And the, the subject that's on my is on my heart this morning is is walking with God. <clears throat> walking with God. Are you and I walking with God? And we need to we need to examine our lives. I need to examine our my life um, and ask myself, am I walking with God? Not only I, I might I can say that I have walked with God in my past, but am I walking with God today? And not asking for a show of hands, but how many of you have already walked with God today? Um, sometimes I, I, I catch myself, um, you know, sometimes I might be halfway through my day. And, you know, we're, we're, we all have our daily routines, <clears throat> and, um, you know, I get up in the morning, take a shower, um, go to work, um, and sometimes I'll catch myself driving home from, from work to go to lunch, and I realize, Marty, you haven't even prayed today. Yeah. Marty, you haven't asked for God's guidance in your life today. Um, Marty. You haven't walked with God today. Now, it's a shame because uh, the Bible says that unto whom much is given, much is required. Um, we have been blessed um, with much, and much is required of us. And I think, I think God expects, uh, um, as, as the Bible talks about, there are some that are babes in Christ that, that have to still drink the milk, but there are some um, that, are, are, that are spiritually mature that have to have the meat, and, and God expects more out of those. And I think that God expects us, um, who He is blessed to see the truth, um, he, he expects more out of us, and He expects us to walk more with Him. Um, but here in this passage in Genesis, um, the Bible talks about a man, and y'all help me, my, my watch has died. Um, it ticks every once in a while, but it's not. But I grab my mama's. Um, I will try to keep an eye on the time. But... Um, here in the passage of Genesis, um, the Bible talks about 
a man. And the Bible doesn't talk a whole lot about Enoch. I think there's only about five passages of Scripture in the Bible that talk to, about Enoch, and two of those were, were really the, just genealogies. Um, but in the other passages, it talks about God, how Enoch walked with God. Now, wouldn't it be amazing if at the end of our lifetime, if at the end of my lifetime, uh, I don't think that'll happen for me, but for some of you that I know, um, at the end of, of your lifetime, when, when we look back and do a summary of your life, wouldn't it be wonderful for God to cause other men to pen in the Bible or to say that this person walked with God? And that's how Enoch is remembered in the Bible, that he walked with God. Now, you know, a lot of times we think that, well, in the day, and, uh, Marty, in the day and age that we live in, this perverse world that we live in, um, that, that we just can't do it like Enoch could. We couldn't do it. We can't walk as close to God. They weren't tempted like we are. Brothers and sisters, if you'll go back and see the condition um, in the days of Enoch, um, this was right, if you go back and look at Enoch's life, this was right before the great flood. And what, what, was, what existed in the world before the great flood? And, the, and the, the purpose of the great flood was God bringing His judgment um, on His people. For their for their the sin that was in their lives, so even though Enoch lived during a unique time um, in human history, which was right before God's judgment of the world by the great flood, despite that, despite that, Enoch walked with God. Um, so this morning, I want us to spend some time thinking about what it means um, to walk with God. What does that mean exactly? And, I, and and you know, what does it mean to walk with God? And um, you know. I, I, one of the things that as I was discover, uh, studying the Scriptures, um, it, it, it struck me, you know, God isn't telling us to go out and run a sprint. Um, God's not telling us to go out and run a marathon. God's telling us to walk with Him. There's a difference in walking with Him. There's a difference in running. Um, you know, when I, could, I certainly can't run today like I used to, uh, much less as quick as I used to, but for as, um, I don't have the endurance that I have. Um, but God commands us to walk with Him, um, and I want I want you to I want you to just hopefully we can just use the next few minutes to question ourselves and do a reflection in our lives um, to think about what is my walk with God like? Am I with Him for a short time period, or do I spend a long time a, a period of time walking with God? Sometimes I found myself, I, I, I think, and I started questioning myself, I think there have been times that I've walked with God for just a few seconds. Now, Marty, what, what do you mean by that? Well, I think there are times, I, I, even in the house of God, over my years of being in the house of God, I felt the presence of God in the house of God, knew I was walking with God, and it wasn't a few minutes later, my mind was, guess what? My mind was wondering. I was no longer walking with God. Now, let me ask you this. Did God change? When I was walking with God, God was in a certain path and Marty chose to walk in that pathway and I was walking with God. And then whenever I stopped walking with God or I ceased to walk with God, whose fault was that? Was it God's fault? It was my fault. Um, <clears throat> but I, I honestly, seriously, in, 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 in a few seconds of time, I think there's been... <clears throat> times that I've walked with Him for a few seconds, there have been times that I have spent hours walking with God. Um, I, would to God, wouldn't it be nice if we were committed enough to walk an entire day? Just think about it. Now, now a lot of times we as Christians think, well, um, I come to church every Sunday morning and every Sunday night and every Wednesday night for prayer meeting. I'm walking with God. Well, walking with God is not a reserved, or, or a reserved activity just for when you come to church. Um, walking with God, if you, if you add up the number of hours um, outside of the church, and, and you know, granted some of that time that we're out of the church, we're sleeping, <clears throat> but we need to be walking with God more. No matter how much. If, and, and listen, we can, we can pretend like we walk with God. I may tell you that I walk with God a lot. And you may not know, because you're not with me all week. Um, you may say that you walk with God a lot. <clears throat> And sometimes I can look at others. There are evidences uh, that you can see in me and there are things that I can see in you to know that you're walking with God. But guess who knows just how much time we spend walking with God? Yeah. 
Who, who does? God knows. You know, and I was thinking, <clears throat> I was thinking while I was studying during the week, you know, we've got a, we, there's a clock on our backs, and, and, and this, is, this is not, there's not really, but, but there, it was like there's a clock on my back, and God knows exactly how much time yeah. I've spent walking with Him. And if, and if we went around and did a poll of everybody, you know, some of us in, some of us in the congregation um, have walked closer to God throughout this past week than others have. That's just a fact. Um, but but I, 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 I honestly think that if that clock was on our back, and I think whoever in the congregation, if God, and God knows, God knows, we don't know, um, but if, if the, whoever person God recognizes, this is the person that's walked closest with me throughout this past week, I would, I would be willing um, to state that that person would probably be the first one to admit that they didn't walk close enough to God. Why? Why is that? Why do you think? And and, and I could I, you know I think of Brother Philip Nichols. I can remember back watching him when he first um, went into the ministry and first started studying. <clears throat> and and it was like, it was almost like Brother Philip before even before he would eat eat a meal he would sit there before that before the fork would go in his mouth. It was almost like he was praying for God to bless that food that was going in his mouth. And before he would say anything, he would pause. And I've seen people like that. And it's like the people, and, and, but yet, I, I, I think of at, at times and, and when I would see Brother, Brother Philip's life and see how close to God he was, he was probably felt like he was the most wretched at the same time. And that's the way that we are in our lives. The closer, the closer that we get to God, and the more we walk with God, one, the more we're going to see our need for God and our need to walk with God. Um, and secondly, whenever the closer we walk with God and the more time we spend with God, the more we're going to see just how bad we are, just how dirty and how wretched and how sinful we are. Now what does that do when we realize that? It makes us more thankful um, for the times that we do get to walk with God. Um, Again, some of us, you know, there are different points in our life. I can look back over my lifetime. Um, some people think, well, you walk with God and, and that makes you a Christian. Or you walk with God and you're going to always be with God. Well, that's not what the God of, God's Word says about us walking with God. We walk with Him today and then we choose. And I may walk with Him for hours. I may walk with Him for a day. But what happens is normally... We as Christians um, don't let go of the things of this world. And, and there are times that I make a choice, and, and let me let me state this: there 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 there's a choice. Um, I didn't choose God to become my eternal savior. Um, God chose Marty, and God chose you, and God chose each one of His people um, in an eternal sense. But once God chooses us, once we've been um, chosen, once we've been called, once we've been quickened once, we, once we've been made alive spiritually. Um, again, God does that work all by Himself. But once God has chosen us and once we are, are one of His um, children, we then have a choice. I have a choice every day of my life of whether I'm going to serve Him and by serving Him, walk with Him, or whether I'm going to choose the things of this world um, and walk in the things of this world. Um, so I, I want you to, just, again, hopefully throughout this, the morning and the afternoon, you'll think about and ask yourself, am I walking with God? Have I walked with God? Can I walk with God more? What can I do? The Bible will tell you exactly what you need to do to be able to walk with God. Um, I think I've already made this point. Um, is it difficult for us as men and women, as natural as natural men and women, is it difficult for us to walk with God? Yeah. Yes. Um, straight is the way um, and narrow is the gate. Um, it's difficult um, that leads to the kingdom of heaven. And in order for us to walk with God, um, we're going to be entering uh, that, that kingdom of heaven, um, which is righteousness and peace and joy um, in the Holy Ghost. Um, I, as I was thinking this week, I said, you know, sometimes as I was thinking back to, to athletics and running, 
Um, you know, sometimes we use the minute, some, and sometimes marathons take hours. Um, and sometimes I think we can walk, literally, I think we can walk with God for hours at the time before our, our natural man gives in and we, and we take up the things of this world, our thoughts take us elsewhere. Um, then when you, then when, when you run um, a mile, you know, hopefully you're getting down to, you know, maybe three or four minutes um, in a mile. And then in a 100-yard dash, you know, your goal was, was you know, that 10-second mark. And then the 40-yard dash was, you know, getting it in the low fours. Um, some of us in our walk with God, there are some that walk close with God and, re- and, and are repeatedly walking with God. And they need, they can time it in hours. Some of us, we might be able to time it in minutes. But some of us, unfortunately, many times in my life, it's like a stopwatch running the 40-yard dash. It's, it's just a matter of seconds that I feel that walk, with, that I'm walking with God. I feel that communion with God. I feel His righteousness and peace and, and joy in my life. Um, but it doesn't last long. And whose fault is it when it doesn't last long? It's my fault. Um, but the Bible, the Bible is full of examples of God's children showing us how we can walk with God. Who can, can any of you think of anybody else in the Bible that walked with God? Job. All right, Job. How, 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 tell me how you mean that Job walked with God. He was uh, a man who was perfect and upright. Uh, he uh, stewed evil. That is, he, he uh, deplored evil. He hated evil. And, and he, he walked upright. He walked in, in God's way. All right, Job. Great example of somebody that walked with God. It doesn't matter. So a lot of times we come up with excuses. It doesn't matter what it is, we come up with excuses. Um, our excuses as far as not being able to walk with God. Well, um, nobody else is going through what I'm going through right now. Have any of you ever thought that? I had somebody this past week that I told them that I was praying for them and I, and I, and I, I, I made the mistake of saying, I understand what you're going through. Folks, we don't always understand what people are going through. But there is one person that does understand. But you look back at Job and what he went through. But Job, Job, what Job wasn't perfect. Did Job ever sin in his life? Yeah. Yeah, Job sinned. <clears throat> but in his time, he, we need to be striving for, for perfection. But Job resisted the devil. Um, even though all those things. I don't know of anybody. I know a lot. I know some folks who have been through some rough times in their lives. But nobody, I don't know if anybody that went through what Job went through and Job still walked with God. Yeah. Um, who else in the Bible can you think of that walked with God? Noah. Noah. All right, Noah. In Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 6 um, and verse 9, I believe it is. It says, again, it says that Noah was perfect in his generations. And then it says, and Noah walked with God. Now, can you think of any way that Noah walked with God? How, how did Noah walk with God? God. Alright. Thank you, Brother Jerry. He obeyed God. Um, he obeyed God. Look back at Noah again. This is back at, at the time of the flood. Um, they had never heard of rain. And Noah's... And, now, and, and just like God's commandment to Noah um, is foolish, was foolish in the eyes of man back then, God's commandments to you and I Sometimes God's commandments are foolishness in my eyes. They're foolishness in your eyes. Look at our nation right now. We don't know our nation, and, and that includes us. We don't know good from evil. We do not know good from evil. We call good bad, and we call bad good. We've got, we've got it backwards. We're messed up. Back in Noah's day, things were messed up. But Noah chose... He had a cho- Noah had a choice to make. When God came and commanded him, that was probably the most foolish thing that Noah had ever heard. Um, but Noah obeyed God. First of all, God, uh, excuse me, Noah listened to God, and we have to listen to God. Now, God doesn't, I don't think we can hear God's voice literally out loud speaking to us. But does God speak to us through His Word? Um, and when He tells us, He commands us, if you want to know how to walk with God, Look right here. I, I can try to I can try to tell you how I I can walk with God. Um, your your pastor may try to tell you how you can walk with God, but you don't have to guess. You know your your pastor could get it right. I could get it or get it wrong. I could get it wrong. 
It's right here if you want to walk with God. Um, some some of the other ones that those are those are two that I two of the ones that I thought of, but I also thought of Abraham. Look at Abraham's life, how that he was how he walked with God. He made some tough choices um, in his life, and I, and I I can't imagine being willing to to have. First of all, again, he listened to God. God told him to take that son, that only begotten son, and to go and offer him as a sacrifice. If I heard that. You better, I, I, I really, I don't think that I would listen to God if God told me to take one of my children yeah. and offer them as a sacrifice. I, I would say, you know, the Bible says sometimes that we need to, to examine, um, I, I, would, I, would, I would probably sit, tell myself, I'd rationalize myself and say, that's not God talking to me, that's Satan talking to me. And, yeah. and, you know, that's not God saying that. Yeah. But Abraham listened to God. And he went and he was going to carry that out. Did God provide a way? Did God, because Abraham was willing to listen to him and to follow his commandments, did God then walk with him? Yeah. <clears throat> Abraham, what about Moses? Think about, think about Moses and his life and what he had to go through. Trying, and and he's a be- Moses was a beautiful picture of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but he was just a picture. Um, and as he, as he was mediating between God and the children of Israel, Moses walked with God. What about David? When I, when I read the book of Psalms and you look at David's life, again, David was not a perfect man. David sinned, just as we all sin. But David sinned, but David, David walked with God. There's no way that you can read the book of Psalms and read the other writings of David and not, not understand that David, not only was he a child of God, but that David walked with God. Now, now David messed up, and what happened because because of the choices that David made? What did God do to David? He suffered, and there were times that he walked with God, and then he was as far away from God as I think a man could get. Um, but he did walk with God. What about then in the New Testament? What about John, uh, Paul, Peter? Um, but to me, you know, the greatest example is who? Jesus. Jesus was a man. Jesus was verily as you and I are. He was in the flesh. He was tempted just as you are. He felt the things that we feel. But what did he do when every one of his, um, when he was tempted? What did he use? What did he fall back on? He fell back on the. He was the. Uh, he, he fell back on the written word. Jesus was the living word, um, but he fell back on the written word. We need to fall back on the written word. Um. And, and, and you know, each of the men that we mentioned, all but Jesus, they walked with God, but then there were times that they didn't walk with God. As, as great as some of those men were, you know, Peter denied Christ. And what some of us will say, well, how could he? He was with Jesus, and he denied Jesus. Now be careful. How many times do you and I deny Jesus? How many times do we deny God? Um, again, in those instances, God didn't change. It was those men changed. And when we walk with God and we stop from walking God, it's because we have altered our path. God's from, if you go all the way back um, to Genesis, when man was created, God has walked in the same paths. He's walked in the same statutes. He's had the same commandments. Look at just today. What's happening today? What's happening in our, in our land today? The things, the Ten Commandments, those are foolishness. Um, there, are th- there are things that, that, that are in God's Word that many of God, and, and folks, God's people, and it's not just Satan and his children that are opposed to God's Word. There are God's children. I want you to think about this. There are children of God who are opposed to God's Word. There are children of God. There are churches. There are churches that are opposed to God's Word. There are primitive Baptist churches that are opposed to God's Word. Well, what, Marty, what do you mean by that? They refuse to obey His Word. There are churches who think it's permissible 
for women to be preachers. There are churches that think that it's okay for preachers to have been divorced and remarried. There are churches that think that anybody and everybody can be a part of the church. It doesn't matter how they are walking. Now in each one of those cases that I just mentioned, there are churches that think homosexuality is okay. Now you would you say, well, Marty, there's no way. Yeah, there is. Those churches are, refu are refusing to hold up the truth. What happens? We as man, we think that we can come, we, we've got it figured out. God, that's the way it was back then, but you know, this is 2014. We've got it figured out. How many of you have ever thought that before? Have you you've read something? I have. I've read something in God's Word and said, oh man, that's the way it was back in the old days. Alright, this is today. Who's changing? We are changing. Does God change? God says that He does not change. And when you look back all the way to Genesis, and all the way until this time world ends, God is going to be on the same path. And it's straight. And it's narrow. And for us to walk with God... For us to be able to commune with God. What does it mean to walk with God? To me, it, it merely means to have fellowship or to have communion with God. In order for me to walk with God, I've got to change my ways. God doesn't need to change His ways in order for Him to be able to come down and adapt to Marty's ways. I need to change my ways. I need to look at the things that I'm choosing in my life to, to make sure that I'm walking with God. Um. Turn, turn, quickly, turn quickly to Micah, Micah chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. If, uh, to me, about the def, best definition on how to walk with God is Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. And this is right. Micah's um, towards the back of the New Testament, just a few books before Matthew. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8 here. It reads, He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. Do you want to know what's good? Man can, kind of, can try to define what is good, but God's Word will tell us. That's how He's, how he's shown us what is good. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. Now there are folks in the world that say, Christianity is just too difficult. It's summed up right here in three things. What doth the Lord require of thee? If you want to walk with God, here's what you've got to do. Number one, to do justly. Is it hard? It's, it's hard for me to do just. It is. It's hard for Marty the natural man. But when I'm walking with God, is it easy for me to do good things? Um... He has showed thee, O man, what is good. We need to be looking in the Bible to find out what is good. God's Word tells us what is good. He has showed thee what is good. <clears throat> and what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy. Is it hard? I don't... Whenever it comes time for Marty to deal with somebody else, I deal kind of harshly sometimes. I like mercy when, when it's applying to Marty. But when it comes to me and my daily walk and how I deal with other people, I need to love mercy. And to walk humbly with thy God. And to, I think about that phrase, and to walk humbly with thy God. You know the first problem that I run into with me trying to walk with God? is humility. It's humility. Marty being submissive to God's way. Because Marty's way is different than God's way. Humility. The first thing we have to do before we can even listen to what God is telling us is I have to humble myself. You have to humble yourself. We have to walk humbly um, with thy God. Um, turn quickly um, back to Deuteronomy. This was I didn't see this until last night, but Deuteronomy chapter ten. Deuteronomy chapter ten and verse twelve. Um, Deuteronomy chapter ten and verse twelve. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? 
but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in His ways, and to love Him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. Now again, we want to talk about how complicated it is. It's simple. Here we're given four things, again, about what God requires of us. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God. Fear the Lord thy God. Is that contrary to what the, what the, what the world teaches? The world says, oh, God's... Most of the time we picture God, we see this sweet old man up there. Um, or, we, we, or we picture a lamb. Now, God, God, Jesus was the lamb. But there's another Jesus that's also taught in the Bible. And he, he will bring judgment. And it will be harsh upon his people when they do not choose to walk with God. Some people, how many of you ever heard, oh, yeah, listen, I want my children to fear me. I feared my daddy. Because I feared my daddy, I did a lot of things I shouldn't. I still did a lot of things that I shouldn't do. But because I feared my daddy, there were things that I did not do because I feared him. I hope that my children love me and I hope they know that I love them. But I hope that my children fear me. Now the world teaches, oh, you know, the world teaches that that's wrong. That's wrong, that a child shouldn't fear a parent. The, the world teaches that we shouldn't fear God, that God's a God of love. That's not the whole truth. Um, the Lord required thee, but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in some of His ways. Is that what the Bible says? Now, I'm, I'm okay. When I, when I read God's Word and I'm studying God's Word, I'm okay with some of those things. But when you start getting down to things that are important to me in this world, I have a problem with it. Walk in all His ways and to love Him and to serve the Lord. Serve. That Again, when I think of serve, I think of, of a servant. I think of somebody that's humble. Jesus was all of those things. Um, <coughs> turn quickly um, over to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. I'm just going to quickly kind of hit a few scriptures here in closing. Galatians chapter 5. Now, the Bible, and I, you know, here's what happens when you start studying God's Word. It gets deeper and deeper, and it expands and expands. I, I started thinking, well, that'll be just a simple uh, topic, walking with God. Well, then I got into, and I started, got into walking with the Spirit, or walking in the Spirit, walking in the truth. Um, walking in the light. All those things are walking with God, and those are completely different subjects, um, different terminologies that is used, but it's talking about the same thing. Verse 6, Galatians 5, verse 16. Um, this I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Did you know that when we're walking in the Spirit, when we're walking with God, we will not fulfill the lust of of the flesh, it's when we stop walking with God that we then begin fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Um, verse, the, the, the next few verses of Scripture, verse 17 says, for the, for, the, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. That's that <coughs> battle that's constantly going on in our lives of good versus evil. Of the man of spirit versus the natural man. Um, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. What does the Bible say about us serving two masters? Cannot be done. Can't be done. You cannot serve two masters. For we'll love the one, or we'll hate the other. We cannot serve God and men. That's in Matthew 6, I believe, 24. Do we try to do that? Do we try to juggle? Have you ever, have you ever tried to juggle that God's Word plainly says you can't do it. But I've tried it. I've tried to have God on one hand and, and it kind of looks like that cartoon with you got God on one side and the devil on the other side and you're hearing both of them talking to you. Um, if you want to know how to walk with God, come back, come down to verse 22. Um, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Go back to, to Micah um, where it talks about in Micah 6, 8. Long-suffering, gentleness, um, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is law. 
There is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. Do we have to crucify this flesh to walk with God? Um, verse 25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Um, let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Turn quickly over to, to Ephesians. In the book of Ephesians, Paul does a Paul spends a lot of time talking about walking with God. And there's two different walks that he talks about. He talks about the way that you used to walk. And what's that way that we used to walk, you and I, that we used to walk? That was the broad way. That was back before he quickened us, and we then had a choice. Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm just going to hit a few verses here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, it says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So that's how we used to walk. Are we to be walking that way now? No. Once He has quickened us, we have a commandment. We're commanded to walk with God. Skip down to verse 10. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. What were you created for? Were you created for your own purpose to do your own thing? No. We were created um, in Christ Jesus unto good works. And when we're doing those good works, we will then be walking with God. Um, which God hath before ordained that we should... What? Walk in them. Um, if you want to walk with God, walk in those good works. What are those good works? Look back to uh, Galatians and look at the fruits of the Spirit. Those are all works that we need to be doing. Skip over just a page to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you what? walk worthy of the, vaca of the vocation. Most of us want to take a vacation instead of working in our vocation. I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all what? This goes back to Micah. Lowliness and meekness. With long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Listen, what to me what is the number one ingredient that's missing in the church? Love. And in each one of these where it's talking about, what's the first commandment? Love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. And what's the second commandment? Alright, love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Skip down to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Be ye therefore followers of God. If you want to walk with God, we've got to follow God. What does it mean to be a follower of God? What's another word um, in the Bible that's used that talks, that, 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 that's the definition that means to be a follower of God? What's that word? To be a disciple. Um, how many of us... Many times in our Christian life, Christian lives, we are like um, where where we're here and then we're gone, and then we're here and then we're gone. We don't stay in the Word. What does what does God say in order for us to be a true to be a disciple? Indeed, what do we have to do? Stay. We have to stay. We have to continue in His Word. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear dear children, and what love. walk in love as who as Christ also hath loved us. Um, skip down to verse 15 through 17. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Um, that, you know, I didn't even get to the... Go home and read. If, you have, if you're taking notes, go home and read um, 1 John. Read that there's there's right now in these scriptures. First John chapter one verses three through seven. First John chapter two verses three through six and verse fifteen. Um, but in closing, turn over to Hebrews Hebrews chapter eleven. Who did we start with this morning? Who did we start with? Enoch. Enoch. All right. Hebrews eleven and verse five. Eleven verse five says, "By faith Enoch was translated that he should not." see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now how did Enoch please God? He pleased God by walking with God. You and I today, um, we need to realize, you know, Enoch walked with God. Um, Enoch was well pleasing to God. Enoch was, Enoch was a witness for God. 
And brothers and sisters, each one of us in our walk, there are others that are watching us. My children are watching me. My wife is watching me. There are others in the church that are watching me. There are people out in our communities that are watching us. Our co-workers are watching us. Children at school, other children are watching you. They're observing us. They're watching us. Um, I, I hope that we can stop and examine our lives to say, am I walking with God? What is my testimony? Um, this, uh, this a beauty, that's a whole other subject, is our testimony. What is our testimony? Um, but I hope, that, I hope and pray that God will bless us um, to walk with God, that He'll help us to walk in the light, that He'll help us to walk in the Spirit. Another one is that He'll help us to walk in the truth. Um, may God add His blessings in my prayer. Amen.